I think we're good to start. Okay. Uh, is there anyone here to speak at open forum tonight? Um, seems like they are not here, but they, um, I think everybody saw the material that they submitted for 12 Elmwood Hills. Right. You want to bring that up now or general agenda? It's not on our agenda. Um, no. no. Um, it was, they, they were invited to come to open forum at my suggestion to explain what they wanted to do um, and to get feedback from the board and to find out for themselves whether there might be a problem. But us talking about it now really has no point if they're not here listening. Okay. Like so I call them they decided they didn't want the feedback. Okay. Like to call a meeting to order. Um, Mr. Secretary, would you call the roll, please? Ludwig? Here. Robinson? You missed it. Yeah, I saw it. Um, not here. Goodman? Here. Thank you. Whitaker? Here. Page? Here. Dreyer? She's not present. I have a motion to approve the agenda, please. So moved. I'll second John Page. Thanks, John. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Agenda stands approved. First item, uh, approving the minutes of June 23rd. Uh, one of our shortest, uh, <laughs> 23 pages. <laughs> Any additions or corrections? Only comment that I have on the on the agenda is, and this is in general, I think, uh, or the uh, minutes, excuse me. I think it's important to make sure that uh, owners are given every opportunity to come in and speak uh, to Jeff, Mary Jo, about their property if uh, it arises that they uh, might want to and made welcome to, to do that. I think it will help our image and uh, hopefully may waylay any uh, potential concerns that they have. Okay, may I have a motion to uh, approve the minutes? I'll make the motion, John Page. Thanks, John. Second, please. I will. David. Thank you. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes stand approved. <clears throat> Is this meeting duly advertised? Uh, the meeting was duly advertised in the daily record of August 18th, 2022. Very good. That meeting will now be held. Uh, we have no communications, no designation of landmarks. We do have a certificate of appropriateness. H-01-22, um, application of Adam Francie for part property owned by Mon Monroe Washington, Warrington, excuse me, LLC at 1468 Monroe Avenue, tax number 137 or 0.05-3-74 for certificate of appropriateness to install a sign. Is there anyone here to speak on that application? Yep, Adam is with us. I just asked him to unmute. Sorry, what was that? <laughs> oh, just if you could talk about, speak about the application and what you're, what you're proposing. Oh, uh, just just the sign. I, um, I was trying to kind of go for an old hardware store sort of look to the sign. Uh, I don't, I don't, this is my first time doing this, so I don't know exactly uh, 
what you're looking for, but uh, I was just trying to keep it as straightforward as possible. Okay, thank you. Any questions? <clears throat> for me, oh. What is the business? Uh, it's a tattoo shop. So I have a, a comment. Um, <clears throat> in general, I like it. I'm a little, I have a question about the colors. And okay. um, if you're, if you're going for bold, you got that. Um, if you're, if you're going for maybe trying to have both bold and maybe blend in a little bit with the with the surroundings, then you might consider uh, either a, a gold on the outer band or a or a or a brown. Um, <clears> Thought that would be my comment. I'm not saying that's a deal breaker sign as a replaceable uh, item, but uh, it, that that's that's what struck me uh, seeing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just trying to do the optional layout. Tell us what it is. I don't think people would know what Lucky Folk is. Uh, I've been tattooing for 20 years. It's just going to be a private tattoo studio um, where I can just have a quiet place to tattoo my clients and uh, just in a safe environment, in a safe area. Uh, I tattoo a lot of uh, older people. And um, so I just wanted to have a space that was um, conducive to uh, helping them have a easier time getting tattooed, basically. So you don't want tattoo on the side? N not really. I mean, I I um, was going to maybe down the road um, apply again and maybe do something on the door that said tattoo. Um, but for now, I just thought lucky folk would blend in and not be overly uh, aggressive, I guess. <laughs> well, I think the sign itself is pretty aggressive, but um, I mean, well, the one next door says audio, and I don't know what the one next door to that look on the other side looks almost like a flower shop. Not quite sure. Um, That's the nail salon. Oh, okay. Does it say nails? I think so, yes. I mean, do you not want it to say tattoos? I I, I didn't really want it to say okay. tattoos, no. Okay. But, I mean, if it has to, I mean, I no, can... No, no, it doesn't have to. I just was... <laughs> actually, you know, Jerry, if I could maybe comment, I, I actually like it without it saying the tattoo. I mean, I, this isn't this is out of our purview a little bit, but, you know, I think it, it sort of sets up a, uh, a curiosity factor, almost like a marketing curiosity factor. I like the and I like the name. Um, Thank you. I guess my comments are just kind of like uh, where John's were. I like the fact that it's the, uh, the the sign size looks like it fits rather well. Um, I, I think the dimensions look good. Um, you know, I, 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 I kind of share John's, you know, the, the, the uh, perimeter, the border of it. Uh, might be toned down a bit just to maybe blend in a bit more, but I, I like it. I like the way it's designed. I like the uh, I like the font you've decided to use. So, thank you. Those are my comments. Okay. Any other comments? Hey Jerry, this is Ken. Um, I just want to chime in here a little bit. Um, Adam, I'm the uh, town attorney, the attorney for the Historic Preservation Commission, among other things. I just want to explain a little bit about what the board's purview is here uh, with respect to your sign. Um, because the building is a designated landmark, um, any change to the exterior needs to come before this board to determine whether those exterior changes, in your case, whether this sign uh, is consistent with the historic character of the building. 
And that's why you're hearing uh, some of our members comment about how it is um, very bold and how maybe toning it down a little might make it blend in a little bit better with the historic character of the building. Um, as to um, the query that a couple of the members have raised relative to um, tattoo on the sign, there is absolutely no requirement for that. Tattoo businesses are legal in Brighton. They're legal in this district. Um, you know, uh, a not commonly known fact is that tattoo businesses are not licensed. Um, there's no certifications that are required. Um, and so uh, there's no, um, if you will, uh, jurisdiction that the town has to, uh, to regulate this business other than making sure that it's in an appropriate retail, retail district, which this is. Um, and I, I would ask the members who have expressed an opinion on the color of the border in particular whether you're asking the applicant if he would amend his application to change the border to brown, because if so, um, that's something that I would want to put in the resolution. Could could one or more of you speak to that, please? I'd say perhaps maybe uh, a gold color like the um, the adjacent sign, just to have a little continuity. Uh, like I had a question. Is Adam still on the call? I don't. I just. Uh, yeah, he just he he just dropped off and um, he's joining us back again. Okay, no, he's gone. He's gone. Sorry, so my computer. Everything I just said. <laughs> hey, there he is. <laughs> sorry, sorry, my computer froze. Adam, this is uh, Town Attorney Ken Gordon. Did you hear anything that I had just shared with you? No, I'm very sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, um, but, but you know what, Ken, it was so good. I'm ready to hear it again. <laughs> I'm going to try to say it again. Um, so Adam, what I wanted to do was to give you a little context for what the board's purview is here. Um, and they're asking about your signs and your colors and the borders because he gone again. He, did we lose him again? No, I'm, I, I, I can still see you guys. Can you okay. hear me? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go to your screen. So I know that you're there. There you are. Okay. Um, the reason that they're looking at uh, the, the size, the color scheme, uh, et cetera, is because the purview of this board, the determination that they need to make is whether any exterior change to this landmark building is consistent with the historic character of the building. So for you, that's, is this sign consistent with the historic character of the building? And that's why you're hearing the commentary about whether it should be a brown or a gold border to tone it down a little bit, et cetera. Um, and um, I did share with the board uh, that tattoo parlors are absolutely a legal uh, business in Brighton. Um, they are not regulated by the town. In fact, they're not regulated by the county or the state either, uh, as long as they're located in an appropriate retail district. And this is an appropriate retail district for uh, a service business such as yours. Um, it is perfectly fine to have that business there. Um, and I was just uh, going to comment on the fact that um, some of the members were talking about uh, having the word tattoo on um, and your um, reluctance. Um, what I think I heard you saying, Adam, was uh, that your business is really not a walk-by or drive-by business. Yours is in a business where people make appointments with you because they know you, you've been in the business for 20 some odd years. Um, and so you're not really concerned that somebody walking by doesn't know that Lucky Folk is a tattoo parlor because the people who are coming mostly to Lucky Folk are gonna be people who already know you and know what they're coming there for. Um, but I did ask the members if they would please clarify <clears throat> whether the idea of changing the border color is a condition that they are asking you <laughs> to make uh, that change before they will approve this sign or not, because that's important for me to know in preparing the resolution that would be put forth for adoption. So member Robinson was just commenting. Go ahead, please, Diana. Uh, I said perhaps a, a gold color like the uh, sign next door would give a little continuity. But I, I agree also that the lucky folk is very bold, but I guess it speaks to the uh, to the nature of the 
I don't I don't mind that I don't mind that, but I think the orange is a little bit much. Yep. Oh, it's actually red. Red. Okay. Okay. I didn't know if that made a difference. No, <laughs> no. It's okay. <laughs> for me. <laughs> for me. So okay. what I mean I like have some thoughts. John, I know you did. Yeah. So what I was saying before is that I, I see <clears throat> two things that would um in my opinion, improve continuity. And one would be uh, brown because the uh, storefront has brown and the brown frames and it would continue that color around and it's also in the adjacent um, stores. And then in the, as Diane was saying, in the adjacent store, there's also a gold. Um, <clears throat> so either of those uh, colors would be an improvement in, in my subjective opinion uh, uh, on this. So um, if depending on the other board members' feelings about this, we could decide whether or not to make it a requirement or a suggestion. Anyone else? Do I hear green, blue? <laughs> <laughs> David? No, the only thing I say is uh, I only want the tattoo on there so you know what it is, but if it's by appointment, you don't need that. No. So it's it's no. your choice. Color, I don't share. Uh, Wayne, any thoughts? Uh, no, I mean, like, I, you know, I'd already, I'd already mentioned that I think that the, uh, I just think the border, um, I don't really mind it being bold, uh, you know, bold signs don't really, uh, don't bother me, but uh, I do think, and I, and I'm, I'm looking at it now, I'm listening to John Page's comment, I do think that uh, yeah, even if it was a brown, um, it, it almost evokes a frame at that point, like a, a true frame that would be much more appropriate historically. I, I don't know, uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm not sure that I feel so strongly about it that I would make it a requirement. I'd, I'd be interested to see how Adam, <clears throat> thoughts are uh, behind uh, John's suggestion, I guess, Jerry? Yeah, that's I, fine. I, I guess I would vote for brown too, simply because I think gold is pretty close to the yellow and brown would sort of match the trim as John said, but uh, Adam, what do you think? Uh, I mean, I can change it to brown. That's not a problem. I had, originally I had black, red oh. and 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 gold but i didn't know if that was too much uh, and obviously this is too much too so <laughs> uh yeah i mean i can change it to brown that's that's not a huge yeah, deal I, to me i think that would tone it down a bit and, uh, i i you know and i and i appreciate that adam on your uh, on your part to uh to do that i i think i think you might like it even better okay sure Again, yeah. this is Ken Gordon, just jumping in one more time, Adam. Um, so uh, when is it that you are looking to open Lucky Folk? Uh, I already opened. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. So you're you're out of your other studio and already relocated to this spot. Yeah, sorry, I didn't, I thought uh, the, the um, fire marshal said I could open, so. Absolutely. No, no, I'm not saying you did anything wrong here. I, I was just going to ask if you had some time, whether the board wanted to see you come back next month with the yeah. border in brown. But since you're already in there, that is not uh, something that would work for, I think, you or really the board. So I will leave that suggestion aside. <clears throat> I mean, I can change it to brown and I, I mean, I could email it or whatever is most convenient. I think for... we could just handle it as a condition of the approval. I think that's okay. fine. And then when it comes in for the building permit, we can just make sure that it's make, meeting those conditions. Any, okay. other, uh, any other comments? I just had a question for Jeff. Um, so Adam mentioned that he might wanna come back at a future date to seek a second sign um, that might say tattoo on a window or on the door or something like that. 
Um, is that something he would need a variance for? Uh, he wouldn't need a variance or a building permit. We, we handle window signs. We, we call like temporary window signs and they, as long as it's less than 50% of the window, they don't need approvals. They can just put them up. Doesn't even need to come back to this board. Oh, I think so. Okay, good. Thank you for clarifying that. Any other comments? And uh, like to close the public hearing. Ken, would you draft a <clears throat> resolution, please? Sure. <clears throat> Whereas application 8H0122 has been submitted for a certificate of appropriateness under the town's historic preservation law for improvement to property located at 1468 Monroe Avenue in the town of Brighton, County of Monroe, owned by Monroe Warrington LLC, Said application being submitted by Adam Francie, F-R-A-N-C-E-Y, to perform work described as the installation of a sign. And whereas the Historic Preservation Commission duly called a public hearing to consider the matter on August 25th, 2022, and whereas the necessary legal notice has been published and the required sign posted, Whereas the public hearing was held and all persons having an interest in such matter having had an opportunity to be heard therein. And whereas the Historic Preservation Commission hereby determines that pursuant to the factors set forth in section 224-5 of the town code, that the proposed above described work to the subject property is consistent with the purposes of the town's historic preservation law and compatible with the property's historic character based upon its review of the application and documents on file and received at the public hearing and the testimony presented at the public hearing. It is hereby resolved that the Historic Preservation Commission hereby receives and files the above described application. And it is further resolved that the Historic Preservation hereby approves application number 8H0122 <laughs> For a certificate of appropriateness for the above described work to be performed at the property located at 1468 Monroe Avenue in the town of Brighton, County of Monroe, subject to the condition that the border of the sign be the color brown and subject to the condition that the above described work be completed within one year from the date of this approval. I'll make that. I'll, I'll make that, um, I'll, I'll support that. <laughs> what's, what's the word I'm supposed to say? <laughs> uh, would you like to make the motion? I'll make the motion. Thank you. Thank you, John. May I have a Gary, second, please? Gary, I'll, I'll second that, Wayne. Thanks, Wayne. Um, any discussion? Um, Jerry, this is Ken Gordon uh, again. Uh, just, I wasn't sure um, if you had done this. I do see that there are other people on the Zoom call. Um, I don't know if you called for comments from the public. Um, if you did, I apologize for having you do it a second time. If you haven't, if we could just make sure that none of our other listeners or participants are interested in commenting on this application. I believe I did, but maybe not. So is there anyone that would like to speak to this application? Um, I do not see anybody raising their hand. Me Okay, very good. Uh, public hearings are closed. Jeff, would you take a, we have a, we have a motion, we have a uh, second. Would you call the roll please? Ludwig? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Goodman? Yes. Whitaker? Yes. Page. Yes. Motion approved. Very good. Um, we have no hardship, you. no hardship applications. Public hearings are now closed. Um, can we, one of the people from the 12 Elmwood Hills project has joined us. Do we want to give them the opportunity to speak? Um, 
Sure. And who is who would like to speak to Elmwood Hills? Uh, it's Larry Heinegger. Okay. Yes. Mr. Heinegger, you have the uh, floor. Go ahead. Um, okay. Well, good evening. I uh, didn't know that I was going to be on this call, but I happened to see that I was invited by Jeff. Uh, I did send a text message to Kim if she was going to get on this call. Um, and the only thing that I can add is when Jeff sent over the list of historic homes in Brighton, there were no homes on Elmwood Hill Lane. And the original home on Elmwood Hill Lane um, is lot 13, which was the Weller estate. Uh, excuse me, just a minute, Mr. Heinegger. What is your re relation to this? Are you just a resident of Elmwood Hill Lane or is this your house or what? No, I, I'm I'm the uh, the civil site engineer. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm the civil site. For people who don't know me, I'm a licensed professional engineer in the state of New York, uh, 44 years of practice. Um, but anyway, Jeff sent me this invite, so I decided to come on at my only observation. And I am a Brighton resident. Uh, I'm fifth generation Brighton resident. Not that that matters for anything. But anyway, the Weller Estate is lot number 13. From the appearances, it was probably built in the late teens or the early 20s. And it was originally an 11 acre parcel that was subdivided in 1946-1947 by the Elmwood Countryside um, Development Group and they created the other 12 lots that are on Elmwood Hill Lane. Uh, this house, I believe the building permit was issued in 1948. And that's that. Oh, okay, just, uh, you don't represent the, the owner, sir? Uh, well, the, the owner is uh, Kim Bailey Stall Properties. Okay. So I'm just telling you what I know. And again, if I hadn't been paying attention to my computer, I wouldn't have see, seen that I had an invite to this. Jerry, uh, Kim Bailey contacted me in June asking for information about this property. And it was at that time that I pulled the uh, building permit. We found out that it was... Uh, built by John D. Cockroft. Mr. Cockroft was president of R.T. French, which is kind of interesting because as you will remember, Sideways was just uh, down the street from the Cockroft property. Um, the, uh, the, house, the, the houses on the street are interesting because uh, they are numbered as to the numbers of the lots on the street. So there are 12 lots on the street and this is house number uh, 12 on the, in the, uh, on the lot. There is, um, Joseph Weller built a brick house on the top of Elmwood Hill along with a brick outbuilding across the street. And uh, it was owned by Charles Rambert at one time and they, who had a couple of barns near Elmwood Avenue, near the, uh, uh, close to Elmwood Avenue. Okay. Okay. And, and for, for some greater context of the board, they want to, they're looking at replacing this house. So it would be a, they're looking to get approvals from the planning board and eventually demolish this house and so they're they're in here to see if there's any historical interest on the property if it's something that the board might possibly consider consider um because when it gets demolished it has to come to the hpc and then they would say that no it doesn't have any historical character that would hold up the, the demolition of it and so they're, right. they're that was their if purpose just, coming if i could just add to what jeff uh, shared with you. Um, my recollection, Jeff, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that this project came before planning board for concept review only at this point in time? Correct, but they made the submission for preliminary. Okay, I'm not aware of that, but um, so they, um, they came before the planning board for concept review. The planning board had some questions uh, regarding um, whether the Historic Preservation Commission would be um, concerned about the demolition of this structure 
Um, uh, Mr. Heininger went into some of the uh, same information that he just shared. Um, and I made a comment uh, at that time as uh, attorney to the planning board that the applicant is, um, and, and Mr. Heininger, but mostly the applicant might wanna come and just do an informal review with the Historic Preservation Commission to see if this was a property that might be problematic to do a total demolition of. Um, this is not before you right now on the demolition permit because that hasn't been referred over to you for that action at this point in time. Um, so it's not on the agenda for that purpose. This is really just in essence a concept review. And so uh, an informal discussion, that's why I think it was put on for the open forum that started at 715 um, uh, rather than having it on as an official business item for the for the board for tonight's meeting. So I, I guess um, I think Mary Jo has shared with us what she has on this property. Um, and I think it might be helpful for Mr. Henninger to hear so he can share it with his client, Ms. Ms. Bailey, what it is that uh, the board's thinking uh, from what Mary Jo shared and whether there's generally any concern about this property being fully demolished. All right. Um, I'd like to also add that the uh, Kim Bailey, Kim Stahl Bailey purchased this from the Hicks. George Hicks, I believe was a surgeon at Strong or a surgeon in the Rochester area. It doesn't matter whether he was strong or Genesee or general, but this house, if looking at it, what you're looking at at the right was an addition that was put on in the 80s. So mm -hmm. the original house was built in 48 for Cockcroft and then Hicks bought it from Cockcroft and the Hicks put on a, a, a two-story addition um, the other thing with this house is that there was a, a water leak and so there was some water damage, um, which is partially why they, uh, in discussing this with the architect, um, uh, whether or not we'd be better off going down in a new foundation with um, insulated concrete forms, uh, new windows uh, meeting current energy code. Um, the existing basement is 74 years old, made out of a CMU block. Um, so this one to shed a little more light on the, the history of the house and the condition of the house. Thank you. Gary, uh, would it be possible for Jeff to go and, and, and point out what is the original portion to the house? Maybe um, in the, the photos? Yeah, the original is just the, the brick section. The garage was, I believe, added later on, as well as this two-story addition here. And, and the brick part to the right as well. This uh, What you're looking at right now, that Palladian window was part of the 1980s addition. Yeah, so here's some other photos of it. Oh, okay. So everything beyond the garage is uh, addition as well. I did drive up around and took a look at it the other day. Um, and some, some of the feedback that you might want to give Mr. Henniger to carry back to his client is, um, what, if any, additional information might you want? What, if any, additional pictures might you want um, when this comes back so that you can make a determination? Or do you think, you know, the, what, what is being presented here is enough for you? Um, those are some of the things that I wanted you all to have an opportunity to think about and give some feedback so that when it does come in, we don't have you know, a hiccup in the process and we can give a pretty direct answer to the applicant when they apply. Sure, Ken, thank you. Um, I personally don't have any strong feelings about the house. I don't know about the rest of the commission. I, th I think the one elevation is, is handsome, um, but there's, Whatever 
it doesn't look like many of the windows are original even on the other side yeah the house is um is kind of kind of interesting but it, it I, I don't it doesn't jump out at me for architectural reasons unless there was some strong social reason and then even if there was then you know you have to weigh that against a, a lot of other things um i i'd like to to maybe get the information that mary joe has if she's willing to just sort of type it out for the for the next time that this this comes up so that we uh, so that we have that and and maybe the applicants could um take the info Nation that Larry's uh, offered, and um, uh, yeah. Jeff, you know, put, you submit the, that. Thank you, Jeff. Could you go to the backside view again with the Palladian window? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, there and the one you just showed. If you look to the left of that Palladian window, there's kind of this ski lodgey thing because that is actually a two-story great room with this fireplace that you see um and so in my opinion that kind of ski lodge look it does not relate at all to the original i mean it's very expensive obviously it was done in brick and all that stuff but it was a 1980s <laughs> addition to a 1947 house the the house uh on elmwood hill lane that is spectacular is the one on lot 13, the original Weller estate. That is a, a late teens, early 20s tutor. And if you do a, a Google from above, birds, uh, you can see all the uh, dormers um, of, the, of obviously the attic. And, and Jerry, having been to your house for the, the car show, I think you would, you would enjoy seeing that house. Oh, that, great, that, thank you. That's, that's uh, the cousin to your house. They only have a three car garage though. <laughs> well, can't have everything. <laughs> but um, I don't know the background on Weller, uh, but you know, uh, after the war, they sold the, the 11 acres. Any uh, other comments? So I guess the only thing that uh, the only conclusion is uh, per John's request that Mary Jo just uh, maybe uh, jot down what you told us and uh, we can have that for when the uh, application comes in. Right. And I, I was in the basement of this house to look at where the water supply was coming in doing my, my civil engineering work. Um, I I don't want to say that there was mold, but I don't want to say that there wasn't because I'm very sensitive to that. And I didn't hang around a long time. No, good. There. Okay. So that would be my other concern is with the, the leak, the leak and the residents being away, um, what's, what other issues are in this house? So if I could just add before you go, Mr. Henniger, um, I think uh, obviously this is not a formal decision of the board. You're not getting any kind of formal statement, but I'm not hearing any strong uh, will to go out and have a uh, report generated, a survey done of this property and move down the road towards designation. Um, the board hasn't made that official determination, but uh, I don't think I'm hearing anything um, that should give you great pause in moving forward with your applications. Great. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Thank you Ken. I'm, I'm glad I was looking at my computer. I'm going out of town tomorrow and I was trying to catch up on work. Very good. Make it. Okay, thank you. No All right, well, thank you and have a good night. I'm going to sign off unless you need me for anything else. No, Larry, thank you, though. And okay. Diana Robinson, it's good seeing you. Yeah, hi, Larry. <laughs> all right, thank you all. Bye-bye. Okay.
uh, next item on the agenda was, uh, or is, for, uh, 1564 East River Road. Uh, Mary Jo, do you want to lead us off with that, please? A couple of months ago, you asked me to look into uh, 1564 East River Road and 1233 Crittenden Road. So this is the first report. This is the report on what I found about East, the East River Road House. And I'm working right now on 1233 Crittenden Road, and that should be to you by the next meeting. Okay, and then you did prepare, uh, I assume everyone has received the uh, memo from uh, Mary Jo on 1564 East River Road. I drove by that the other day. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's quite an impressive house. Mm -hmm. It is. It seems to be very, very well kept up at this point. Pardon? It's very well kept up. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, is this something we'd uh, like to move ahead with uh, possible designation? And uh, if so, do you feel we need an upgrade to the uh, up, upgrade to the survey? Or uh, do you think the survey is, uh, do you see any changes since the survey was made? I may have missed something. I don't seem to have an agenda or a copy of the survey. I have photographs of driving by the house. I might have missed an email or something, Jeff. Um, Maybe Mary, for later, later would be fine. Yeah, okay. the survey wasn't sent around. I mean, this is oh. the preliminary. Uh, oh, okay. Preliminary uh, item that Mary Jo brought up and uh, mm -hmm. presented us with the uh, summary here that we received. Okay. So um, perhaps for next month's next month's agenda, uh, maybe Jeff, you could send it around the uh, original survey. Yep, we can do that. Okay. Any comments about any other comments about this house? I urge you if you have not done so to drive by it. Nice. Any other new business? Okay. Any old business? There being none, may I have a motion to adjourn? I will make that motion, Jerry. Thanks, Wayne. May I have a second? I'll second. Thanks, Diana. Any, uh, may all in favor of adjourn? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you all for coming. And see you next month. Next Thanks month. Everybody. Next month. Oh, don't don't go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't run away too quick. <laughs> Who are, I thought we already looks like we already did we lose anyone? No, maybe not. Uh, next month we're going live. Oh, okay. See you at town hall next month. Uh, Excellent. See, isn't that on Elmwood somewhere? <laughs> somewhere. Somewhere. It used to be. <laughs> Still is. Okay. So we will be live and in person uh, at our next meeting at Brighton Town Hall. Very good. Great. We, we missed all the hot weather in the in the town hall, so that works out. Mm, yeah. Don't make promises, <laughs> Jeff. It's still going right. to be stuffy and stuffy and miserable in that auditorium. Don't worry. All right. Okay, folks. Thank you. See you next month. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.